Hi guys, welcome back to another video. And in this video is going to be about our eggmobile build. And originally I had planned to do a training on this, um, but I'm just so busy. And I also thought that um, it'd be nice to put this out there so other people can follow it. And you can see behind me is our, one of our Ridgedale style eggmobiles. Um, well, I've sat down and I've looked at uh, my context here and what I need to put uh, out of an eggmobile. And I've designed a new Heather Hill Farm Eggmobile and I'm going to take you on that journey. When it comes to building an Eggmobile, um, it's it's good. I started with the Ridgedale style model because one, I didn't know actually where my farm was going to be, so I didn't know what constraints I was going to work within. And I needed a model that was going to work, that was going to be kind of tested and would work. And that was great for me. But I feel like um, I, I can refine that now and uh, really uh, do things that that'll really work well for me. Um, so when you're building an Eggmobile, you got to think about your context and uh, Here's a little look at what I considered in my context. So for my Eggmobile, um, it had to be EU certified to meet the standards for 350 to 400 birds free range or 230 to 265 organic. And that means, uh, you know, taking into consideration floor space, roof space, waters, feeders, nest, uh, nest uh, space. And so that's going to be a case of wherever you are going through the information, compiling it, what you need, and then multiplying it out to whatever many birds you're trying to fit. And that'll tell you how much of each space you need. The second thing is I wanted it to have low impact on the pasture. So when I was moving this round, I knew I didn't want it to be uh, leaving big ruts behind it. Um, so I knew I'm going to have to spread that weight out over multiple axles. I want a good ground clearance, at least a half a metre. I found with my other eggmobiles, there's some parts of the farm where I have little dips and stuff. And what would happen is once the wheels would go down into the dips, either the back or the front might be catching in the ground. So I want a good ground clearance just so I have no issues moving around the farm. And even if I potentially moved on to another farm in the future, that I've left some, some uh, room there to be on more rugged ground. And looking around the farm, I was happy with a max width of 3 metres and a max length of 8 metres. And that's taking into consideration my um, access points, my tree lanes, and what I'd be happy with. So that was kind of the maximum parameters there that I could work within. I wanted no wooden components. And this is just for poultry mites. No matter where you are, I think you're going to get poultry mites. Um, and it's just a case of it's way easier to manage if there's no wood in there because wood gives them little cracks and crevices to hide in. Um, so you just have to spend more time managing that and cleaning it. Whereas with the uh, all metal components, um, it's less time. And that's when I, I want this eggmobile to be extremely time efficient. And also metal parts will last longer than wooden parts. I was setting myself a €5,000 budget and that's for materials. Obviously, I'm going to work my time for free in building this, uh, engineering it, but I've set a budget of €5,000 for materials. Uh, one thing I wanted to take from the Ridgedale style eggmobile was the sloped roosts for allowing the psychological um, instincts of the bird to have the pecking order. Um, a lot of uh, the bigger... EU certified eggmobiles tend to have the roosts all on one level and I felt strongly enough about this and how happy the birds seem to have that uh, sloped roost so I wanted to inter integrate some sort of sloped roost system. And I wanted easeful egg collection, something similar to the chicken caravan. I like that concept where you just go and you open the door and there's a belt there and just all the eggs come to you. It's nice, comfortable, it's fast, you know, that's what it's about, efficiency. I wanted it uh, similar to what I'd done with the ridge sales. I wanted it fully automatic and I wanted to take it a step further this time because whenever I leave the farm, no matter who I leave in charge of the farm, it's always on my mind what's happening at the farm and particularly the layers because they're a very important enterprise in the farm. There's a lot of money tied up in a flock. So I wanted remotely controlled and what that means is I wanted to be able to log on to my phone. I wanted to have a camera so I could see what was happening there in the Eggmobile. And I wanted to be able to control it, open and close doors, turn on and off lights, open and close nest boxes um, remotely from my phone anywhere in the world. 
So that's what uh, the considerations for my context um, that I thought about before I designed the Agmobile. And then generally for designing any project, I just start with paper. I start forming ideas in my head and I start putting it down in paper, a rough draft first. And then I start to kind of shape it, rough out the shape, what it might look like. Um, so you can see in this image, I've kind of figured what it would look like from the back um, and what it would look like from the side kind of roughly spacing out where the structural steel might go. Then in this image, I'm starting to think about it from the, looking at the top, what the structure of the chassis would look like, how, where I would need to triangulate it for it all to work, where what axles and where axles would go. And then you can see in this image here, I've, I've really formed the design of the Agmobile, what I think is going to work. And I've started to make up uh, cut lists or material uh, lists so I can start to price things up. And it's it's at this point now I'm kind of I've pretty much got the idea. I'm the kind of person where this uh, a sketch like this um, with rough measurements sketched out on it, and I can figure the rest out as I'm building. That's kind of how I work. Um, some things I might improve, some things I might change, uh, but generally I just want to make sure I can order the material and get a, a fairly accurate estimate on prices. So that's the thought that I've put into. Uh, design in my Eggmobile and now we'll start to take a look at the project of the build. Okay, day one of the project. This is my donor trailer. I actually bought this trailer about a year ago. Um, I've seen it advertised on one of the, on Done Deal, one of the advertisement sites and I got it really cheap. I think it cost me 500 euros and I've actually had it sitting up since. Now, my pla I don't really need to use a donor trailer like this. I could build the whole thing because I'm not going to use these axles. You're going to get taken off. Um, but what I like about it is the frame, uh, this top frame. So from this bar here to that back bar is 20 foot and or six meters. And I want to go eight meters. So I'm actually going to build on out here. I'm going to take off the hitch. I'm going to put a, my dolly, my front axles are going to go pivot right on where the hitch is. And I'm going to move the back axles a little further back. And I'm going to build another two meters forward on the frame. So first job I need to do here. So I'm only really taking the steel work, which I could make up the steel work if I had to. I'm not using the axles. The reason why I'm not using these axles are the wheels are just not going to work for me. And plus, by the time I extend it out to the front, these axles here are going to be too close to the middle. Um, to just utilize these these axles here. I want to even the weight out a bit. So I want to move them back so that there's even weight in the front and the back axles. So first thing to do is to strip off all this stuff. Now I'm going to keep everything because I'll probably reuse it. I'll keep the hitch. I'm going to keep those axles. I'll reuse them on another project. Um, I have a shelter to make for the sheep and goats. I can probably use an axle for that. And I'll definitely make use of them. And there's also some good lights in this trailer. There's LED lights in the back, so I'll keep them and they'll be put to use for something and so we'll salvage everything and then we'll get the frame ready okay i got the hitch all cleared off here um, and everything cleared off here i'm just working on the axles here now bit fiddly here because in this example of the trailer i'm using i got to pull the axle apart so i got to take the stub axle out and take off this whole assembly so that i can take the axle down and squeeze it back through that membrane there but uh, if I wasn't going to use these, I would just cut them out, but uh, these are good axles and I want to use them again, so I've got to disassemble them and put them back together. So just got to rip these out and then the last thing I've got to do is take the lights off the back and we've got our chassis ready to go. Okay, I just got the head down there and got a little bit of work done. Um, so I was trying different ideas and originally we had the drawbar here and the issue I was having with the drawbar was it was so deep it was six inches here and because we want to do our uh, front axle rotating uh, the, the wheels have to be able to clear they can't when they're turning around in there they can't be filing off anything and i was afraid if i was going to keep the uh, um, drawbar in place to clear the drawbar it was going to have to sit this high and it's almost it's over two and a half foot high um, which is too high for me to have it off the ground. So what I've done is I've actually cleverly taken the drawbar and put them down the side here and used them as a brace. So now if we look from the side, you can see 
I went from, so we've got that support that was already on the trailer. I've taken the drawbar and bolted it three bolts. One, two, three here, and then three more here. One, two, three, and I've extended out my front. And now this gives us perfect support. So the front axle is going to be right there. The back axle is going to be back there. So the only real uh, weak point might possibly be is here. And this is actually, uh, it's got two U channels. Um, back to back so it's basically a massive i-beam so it's really strong so i'm happy with that so now we're eight meters long from here all the way down to the front here um so and i'm i'm really happy with the structure of this because we've got this is all reinforced so we've got three inch channel iron this is two three inch channel irons back to back all the way along here and then it runs off on one more channel iron and then this is a uh, two inch box iron supporting it and we've got a lot of triang triangulation going on so we're going to have one axle right here holding the whole thing up another double axle that's going to be a double axle too i'm um, supporting it and then a double axle that's going to pivot and i'm just now trying to figure out my pivot point so the front of the egg mobile is going to rest here and so what we've done is we've bolted this three inch channel iron and this is really strong and what i've done is um i've run it all the way out because the ne the top of the Agma wheel is going to be made out of two inch box iron and that's going to run and sit on top of this and then we'll weld it down. But what's important is it's physically going to be sitting all the way. It's going to be pushing down on this bit, which is fully supported by the undercarriage. And now we're just going to figure out where to where her center point, where we're going to actually put all the pulling force through. Um, so I've come a meter back. This will be the front of the Agma wheel. And I've come a meter back because I think that's roughly where I want to put my axles. I would put them a little further back, but I don't want to go too far back because then remember I have to get a drawbar out and underneath this, and I don't want the drawbar being too long. So I've gone a meter in. The vice grip there is the center. So what I'm thinking of doing, I'm going to cut this piece of steel and fit it in there exactly the same as the front one, weld it up, and then I think I'll run a support bracket back to there. And another support beam back to there probably not three inch i think it's a bit overkill um two inch box iron might be better there uh, and that'll just mean then when we because we're going to put some plate on here and there'll be a plate on the axle and put a bolt through them uh, and so when we pull on this it'll be nice to be we'll be we'll be pulling from this corner we'll be pulling from this corner but we're also going to pull from there and there and it also when we put a uh, lateral force on it when we pull that way with the dolly, um, these triangulation will give it good support. Um, and remember, above this, we're going to have more two inch box iron and the whole floor is going to be well meshed. So that's going to triangulate it and take some of the uh, forces out of it as well. Um, but I'm really happy with this. It's definitely going to be a strong job. It's a big, long trailer. Um, eight meters is a long one. And once we get so the plan from here is to get, get this, get the frame the main body uh, to the size we want then we'll put in the front axle and that will find what height we want to be there now my front axle i want to make uh, i want to, the wheels actually fit inside this frame so this is six foot and i want the wheels to be on the inside of the six foot then the back axle i'm going to put the wheels on the outside of the six foot so they'll be at least six foot on the inside of the axle that way the back wheels will always be traveling over different ground to the front wheels the front wheels will be inside the back wheels and it just spread out the weight a bit more on the ground. Um, now, each axle is going to be double. Now, I could offset the wheels in each axle, but I don't. I think I'll put them in line. It's just neater and tidier. Uh, so, yeah, my next step now is to get this stick welded in, get some reinforcements, and also, I don't have any plate yet. I need to get some nice, big, heavy plate to make the, the uh, fifth wheel mechanism or the, the pivoting mechanism. So we've welded in our brace, welded on both sides, and then we've run our supports back to the chassis. Now we're going to put a plate in here. I don't actually have the plate yet, so I can't put it in. So I'm working on axles. So for our axles, we're using these. These are flotation tires. They're like ATV trailer making kit tires. Um, they're rated for 300 kilos. 
uh, which isn't a lot, but they're rated for 300 kilos at 60 miles an hour, 100 kilometers an hour. We're only moving real slow, and it's not really, it's the tire, but it's more so the uh, hub. And all we do, they come as a kit. You get the tire and the hubs uh, in a kit, two of them. And we just weld on the hub. Still pretty hot, it's only after being welded. We do the same on that side. And that makes up our axles. Um, I've been using these a lot. They're really good because they've got a really wide footprint. So they spread the weight over a great surface area. You can get these with little uh, spikes on them too. Uh, that's what I actually normally use. I just got a good deal on a set of these. They were, the set of four were, um, I think it was 400 euros. Uh, so I got two sets of them. And now I'm just figuring out how I'm gonna have a double axle in the front. So the two of these are going in the front and it's just just under six foot from the outside um so i'm purposely making this this is only really holding up the trailer at one point so it doesn't need to go the whole way out to the end um it's kind of pointless uh, i figure i have enough stability uh by going this wide so now i'm just working out i'm going to use the hitch um, from my donor trailer so i'm just working out now how long I need to come out here with my drawbar so that when we swing round we're clear of the corners and we have enough room for the vehicle as towing as well because sometimes I will be towing this with the vehicle sometimes I'll be using my winch and dolly uh, so I'm just working all that out now so that we leave enough clearance uh, but I'm super happy with this I think it's going to be a perfect job um, the main reason for these supports here well they help both ways when we're pulling so I imagine if we're pulling here rather than just using this bar here to pull we're pulling now from that point and that point and that's connected to our whole trailer the whole way back um, but also if we turn these axle 90 degrees and we try to pull everything this way um, it would try to distort the shape of everything but because this square is we've got triangles here now this is going to be super well braced so when we pull this way we'll take the whole trailer with it mm -hmm. 